It's an astrophotographer's worst nightmare. A new moon, good transparency, low humidity, but the wind is out of control. Visions of bad guiding and elongated stars haunt your dreams. It's enough to make you give up and try a hobby less dependent on the weather. But what if there was another option? What if you could embrace the wind and take some nifty images anyway? Well, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick, and in this video I'll show you a fun way to make the most of it when your city becomes a windy city. We'll take images like this with limited equipment and under conditions when most others would just stay in. Let's image some serious star trails. So check this image out. This colorful abstract squiggle is the star Sirius, imaged over four seconds with my DSLR camera attached to my Newtonian telescope. Now looking at that, you might think I need better guiding or maybe a totally new mount. But believe it or not, I was actively shaking the telescope while that image was taken. And the beautiful colors were supplied by Sirius and Earth's atmosphere. Stars twinkle in the sky because they're point sources of light. Yes, they're very big, but they're also extremely far away, almost unimaginably so. So these point sources of light, as that light hits the Earth's atmosphere, it gets refracted. And the different colors, the different wavelengths of light, get refracted to different amounts. It's the same principle as when you shine light onto a prism. You find the rainbow spread out there as the different wavelengths of light get refracted by different amounts. So very bright stars like Sirius show off an ever-changing kaleidoscope of colors in the sky, especially when conditions are very windy, the seeing is not great, and also when they're very low on the horizon, just having risen in the sky or getting ready to set in the west. Now by moving the telescope or the camera lens around during the exposure, you're able to trail that light of Sirius across the sensor of the camera, and therefore give you an idea of what colors were showing at the very instant that that light hit the sensor. So to check this out, I made my way to a local park with a nice hill and a view of downtown Chicago for my imaging on a very windy night. So what sort of equipment will you need? Well, a tripod or mount will be needed, but it doesn't have to be fancy. This one isn't computerized or particularly useful for long exposures. You can use a DSLR or a one-shot color camera, but mono cameras aren't going to work for this particular project. For a lens, you could definitely use a telephoto lens. In my case, I'm going to use my Newtonian telescope with a thousand millimeter focal length and use a T-ring adapter to connect the camera to the telescope at prime focus. So the telescope essentially becomes a massive telephoto lens and there's no eyepiece involved. For this setup, I didn't do any polar alignment. I didn't carefully balance the scope. I didn't use any tracking or guiding, electronic focusing, or calibration frames. This is a perfect project for those just starting out in astrophotography. It's really low pressure. You don't need to have good guiding or anything like that. You don't need to find the North Star. If you could just find Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, and know when it's rising, maybe using a smartphone app, you'll be all set. You can take your maybe somewhat limited equipment out there and see what you can see. I timed my imaging for when Sirius was rising, but you can also do this at other times of the year or the night when Sirius is setting. Now, you don't want it right on the horizon, maybe five or 10 degrees up, so it's nice and bright. Stars that are much lower and just over the horizon appear much dimmer because that light is being scattered so much by Earth's atmosphere. Well, first off, you want to center the star in the field of view using live view if you're using a DSLR. You can crank up your ISO for this part just to make the star extra visible. Now focus isn't critical for these images, and in fact having the star slightly out of focus will spread the color out and make it a little bit more obvious. So you can just play around with it, see what settings work for you. Then figure out what your range of motion is. You can shake the scope around, hit the tripod, try turning the right ascension and declination knobs if your mount has those. Depending on your setup, you might be surprised at how far you can move the scope and still keep Sirius in frame. Once you have that determined and Sirius is centered, adjust the settings on your camera for imaging. Now, the settings I used for my DSLR were ISO 100 or 200 and a four second exposure. And then have some fun. Start the exposure and then you can start shaking. You can try tapping, maybe bumping or 
some precise movement of the adjustment knobs to trail the light of Sirius across the sensor. And the image preview should show you immediately if you kept Sirius in frame and what kind of results you're getting. Now there isn't any right way to do this. Every image is gonna be different. So play around, take a few dozen images and see what you get. Now I'm shooting in Bortle 9 skies, very light polluted. So anything beyond a four second exposure or with higher ISO than about 100 or 200, I'd be getting a lot more light pollution in my frames. So I keep that down, but depending on your sky conditions, you might have a lot more flexibility on the settings that you can use. Now you can also try out different stars or even a planet. Planets are interesting because they don't twinkle. They aren't point sources of light. Through a telescope, you can see the disk of, say, Jupiter. Now because of that, you're not going to see the colorful effect, but it's interesting to see it side by side with a star like Sirius that does twinkle. I imaged Jupiter with this technique, and you can see it's steady light trailed across the image. So once you've got your images, you can pack up, head on home, get warm, and put your photos into your photo editing software of choice. I'd recommend increasing the contrast, making the darks darker, bumping up the vibrance and saturation. And beyond that, just making it your own. Crop it down to size, and then you can show it off. And of course, this just covers the basics. There's a whole range of possibilities of what you could do with this technique. So it's definitely a fun and creative way to take an astrophoto, especially on those nights when any sort of deep sky, long exposure astrophotography would be out of the question. Let me know in the comments if you try this out or if you have any other ways that you while away those frustratingly clear but windy nights. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, give it a like, that way others can find it as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies, we'll see you next time.